Hello everybody, welcome to another unboxing video where I'm going to check on one of the best of affordable 4K monitors, Dell S2721QS. This monitor has 27 inches IPS panel with 4K UHD resolution with 3840 pixels in width and 1160 pixels in height. It has AMD FreeSync and picture-in-picture -picture feature. And by cutting the sealing tape on the box and by opening it, there is very first artifact and that is the quick start guide which has a picture displaying on how to unbox the individual parts of the monitor and how to mount it together. It also displays how to connect the cables, how to power on the monitor and how to rotate the display to pivot position which needs special trick. Another artifact is the sachet with the energy indicator stickers and we also have safety and regulatory information. Let's move on to another artifact in the box and that is the power supply cable and let's check if this one has a small connector or old fashioned thick power supply connector. And as we can see there is thick 3 pin power supply connector so we can expect the power supply unit will be integrated within the monitor. Next artifact is the HDMI cable and even though this monitor has display port connector available the display port cable is not included in the package. Now let's unwrap the stand base and as you can see all the main parts of the monitor and stand riser and stand base are wrapped in foam plastic cover to protect the surface from scratches. So this is the stand base, pretty standard shape and the plus point is for presence of screw handle so I do not need to search for any screwdriver to mount it together with the stand riser. Let's remove the paper cover from the box and underneath we can find the monitor itself and also the stand riser. So let's first unwrap the stand riser as we will need it to help us to take the monitor out of the box. As you can see it is again very protectively wrapped into the polyethylene foam bag. So let me just unwrap it and it is fairly standard stand riser, nothing special, no RGB or extra features except the hole for cable management. So let's mount it to the stand base and you can see that there is only one direction you can plug it in. And from the bottom of stand base we can use the screw handle to tighten the stand base to the stand riser by rotating the screw handle clockwise to secure the stand assembly. There is even arrow above the screw handle to provide clear instruction. Let's not forget to close the screw handle, one final check to ensure it is mounted properly and we can uncover the VESA slot on the display. What I really like on the Dell and Alienware monitors is the quick release and snapping feature. I'll just align and slide the tabs on the stand riser into the VESA slot. And let me just tilt the stand riser a little bit due to the box is preventing me to snap it in. And now I'll just press the stand down until it snaps into the place. You could hear the quick snap lock sound and now we can go ahead and lift the monitor from the box by holding the stand riser and then placing the monitor in upright position on my unboxing desk. Let me just lower the monitor to fit the camera shot and it is the time to lift the protective cover from the monitor. And at very first look to the monitor IPS panel we can see it has a matte surface so it won't mirror much of your windows or the RGB LED lights you have on the wall behind your chair. Let's summarize the content of the box. We have power cord, HDMI to HDMI cable, quick start guide with mounting steps, safety and regulatory information with power energy stickers, and we unbox stand base, stand riser and monitor itself. For power cord I have the EU socket one, but in US you'll get the one for US socket. That would be it in the package. Now let's have a look into the back of the monitor to check the height adjustability of the monitor stand. You can again notice the hole on the monitor stand for cable management. I'll get back to it later in the video. And as you can see the stand riser slides well up and down. We can't swivel it but we will be able to tilt it and pivot the monitor on the stand to 90 degrees. Now let's do a little bit of the design review and there is one thing I would like to show you and that is the thickness comparison with ultra thin Dell monitor with IPS panel. And as you can see it is thick only around 8mm which is 0.3 inches. Whereas the new Dell S2721 QS is thick 16mm which is 0.6 inches so basically double of thickness. And the reason for that is the power unit which is integrated within the monitor and thus it needs extra space and also bigger heatsink holes on top of the monitor. Now let's have a look into the connectors and we have security lock slot, power connector, then on the other side we have two HDMI 2.0 ports, one display port version 1.2 and audio line out port. There are also speakers present on each left and right bottom sides of the monitor. 
Now let's check how easily we can rotate the monitor by 90 degrees into the pivot position and in the quick guidance we could notice that at very first we are supposed to tilt the monitor because the standardizer is not so high to allow us to rotate it without this trick. So be extra careful to do not scratch your desk surface while rotating the monitor into the pivot position and as you can see there is around 2 cm or 0.8 inches of space under the monitor for your keyboard or mouse cables. Now let's have a look into the bottom side of the monitor where are located our connectors and we can start connecting the monitor to power cable and to HDMI cable which will be routed to our PC. And for that we are going to use the hole in the standardizer which will serve for our cable management. So let me just plug in the power connector and in similar way I'm going to route the HDMI to HDMI cable. Obviously if you have a DisplayPort output on your PC or laptop you might just use DisplayPort cable. But that one is not part of the package so you have to use your own. So let me connect the HDMI cable and that would be the basic connector setup. You can notice there are no USB ports and even USB hub input connector is not present. So let's rotate the monitor by 90 degrees back to the normal position out of the pivoted position by tilting it first and again be careful to do not scratch the surface of your desk. And now is the time to plug in the other end of the power connector to our power socket and we can go ahead and hit the power button at the bottom of the monitor. And the monitor is successfully starting up and at the very first step we are being prompted to select the language of OSD menu. So let me just hit the confirm button to choose the English language. And we are going to wait for the monitor to scan the input sources, in my case the HDMI input from the Dell laptop. Now let's do a review of the OSD menu and first option in the menu is the brightness and contrast settings. Second option is the input source selection where you can also enable the auto selection of input source. Next option is the color settings where you can select from multiple presets such as standard, comfort view with decreased blue light, movie, FPS, RTS, RPG, warm and cool and others. You can also choose from the RGB or YPBPR as a color input format. Next option is display settings where you can set the aspect ratio, sharpness, response time, dark stabilizer and smart HDR. Next option is the picture in picture or picture by picture feature. Next option is for audio settings for the integrated speakers. Next option is for settings of the OSD menu such as language and transparency. Next option is for personalization where you can set the shortcuts of individual buttons and power button let behavior. And last option called others where you can get various display information. This option is useful when you want to identify resolution and frequency of the monitor and here we can see that mine is running on full resolution but only 30 Hz. And after dozens of minutes spent on installing drivers and changing cables, I have found out that my notebook has only HDMI 1.4 connector which supports 4K resolution only at 30 Hz. So stay tuned for unboxing of new notebook with RTX 3060 graphic card. Now let's do a little bit of measurements and let me lower the monitor on standardizer to the lowest position and that would be 4 cm which is 1.6 inches. However, by measuring from bottom of stand base, it would be 3 cm, which is 1.2 inches. And that is given by the fact that the stand base is thick 1 cm, which is 0.4 inches. Now let me slide the monitor to highest position on stand riser, and as you can see it slides well. And now we can measure the maximum height from the desk. And that would be 15 cm, which is 5.9 inches. However, when measured from stand base, it is 14 cm, which is 5.5 inches. And if you are interested in measurements of the stand base, then the depth is 17.6 cm, which is 6.9 inches. And the width in widest point of stand base is 26 cm, which is 10.2 inches. And the shortest width in very front of the stand base is 19 cm, which is 7.5 inches. Now let's test the speakers and I will be decreasing the volume and then increasing the volume to determine the volume range.
As you could hear, the speakers are very normal. For gaming, you will need headset or at least a gaming soundbar. And if you are interested in unboxing of that one, stay tuned by hitting the subscribe button. So the final thoughts, I like the 4K resolution, the colors of IPS panel, the stand, the presence of speakers, picture and picture and picture by picture features of the monitor, but I definitely would like to see more than 60Hz for refresh rate. So in summary, it is very good 4K monitor for reasonable price. And until my next unboxing video, cheers!